a Uktron, a Ari, a Vra, a Ari Ushla. Faltarov, quick seminar Nashunta on Uktron, Michal D. E. Higgin. On Oiga, Oxen Teronicus, Ravilis Adoyek. President, ministers, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Being Young and Irish 2012, President Michael D. Higgins National Seminar. Is Ture in law on you, er Froches. Froches a gorla dinioga. Froches a her two slash er an anula deg, dem blin shakata. Nur doger on tuktron, gurbe shul. Seminar duchin yoga. Groshishin er an hate seminar, a hastig wai, ker laher, agase maruktron. Today is the culmination of an engagement process with young people that began on the 11th of November. For those of you who haven't been involved from the start, here's a brief synopsis of the journey. Once the president got settled into the ORIS, he set to work on Being Young and Irish 2012, appointing both an advisor group and an implementation group to look at the logistics and practicalities of a project for young people aged 17 to 26. On the 25th of May, the president formally launched Being Young and Irish 2012 here at ORIS and Uchtaran asking young people, what is your vision for Ireland? What needs to happen to achieve this vision? What can young people do to help achieve this vision? August is a good, not fully much galer. Kershe cash earner, current to drunk cash earner, a sogna tiersho. Or vish, dun tiersho, a her nul do. Kabe balak germin linna. If screeving or half with fuman of fisha, asquelga, no amerla. August fresh and er new social videsh a guinea frastel er count dis nich her cardlina regunacha er via shield timpanatira. O mean about ne goodi v yer v van for. Glock brushes oaked gade dinner og port said shunskluv og August and Tyrannicus. Throughout this process, almost 800 young people contributed to being young in Irish 2012 between May and the end of September. The Being Young and Irish team gathered together all our ideas and visions for Ireland from the regional workshops, the online and postal contributions. DIT researchers analysed all of that information and is today published in the Being Young and Irish Report 2012. This morning, as you will see in the video coming up shortly, 100 young people looked at that report and used it as the basis to prioritise those ideas on vision, actions to achieve that vision and our commitment to making that vision happen the Take Charge of Tain Change Declaration that we will present to you later. I guess Bunaher Arm Proches, Crimshahook, Shaw. Kirkmid, I get a bell bill, Kermid, a lawher, Osfor Kor, or Fish, Duntir Shaw. I guess near Moor Fuinti, a Kirk Fuivrod on Uktron, I guess a all lave, Kurt V. Kos, Kurha Osahor. I guess Shahug of near Moor Hamishin, Kersi Changan. An Huelge, Fustiucht, Fjuntrucht, Idachis, Co Oninis, An Pobal as in Suki Hivilte, Moraine Lesh, Mielish and Antantish at Hogwinne, Mar Erni Oge, Agsen Qui, Grafader Linne, Ekor Livsche, Canary Natirisho, Canis a Glocker Ernahu, Mar Der Anuktron Fane. August Tomid and Shaw in you, Er Wahalesh on Isha, a her oath for her. Today we are here to tell you about the Ireland we want and how together with you, the leaders of our country, we can, to quote President Higgins, take charge of change. So today I'm starting a discussion and I'm inviting you to join in. The Being Young and Irish initiative seeks to hear the voices of young Ireland. What life is like for you? What's going well? What is not so well? What you would like to change? And how you think that that change might happen? And we need you to come forward and share your visions and help us together 
to build a real republic that provides opportunities, hope and respect for all. Well, it's all about like standing up and being counted and letting the voice of young people and the voice of people generally being heard down every avenue in life. The first thing we discussed was government reform because we feel that for changes to be implemented we need to have the proper people in charge to implement them. Tolerance and understanding of each other's cultures, backgrounds and heritage, uh, something that is quite often lost, which really is a divisive factor in our society. And we want the Irish language uh, used as a language of the people, something which you could speak every day, maybe on the street to someone you know. We talked about a need to recognise the past, but you know, a need to move forward as well. First of all, we need to talk more about same sex marriage uh, and adoption rights for LGBT persons. Well, what I'd like to see for Ireland is an education system that supports political progression. Something where young people can be informed on politics, the system and the implications of their votes and also the importance of voting. So I want people to register to vote and, and understand that they all have a say, what they say counts. Stand up tall. My vision for Ireland is for this country to be a strong and stable and have a strong and stable environment. I'd like to see young people part of the action and President Higgins has given us that opportunity. Many of the discussions today are centred on social and uh, educational developments, but it's important to remember that we need to develop a sustainable economy to support these developments. Uh, we need to stop sending the cheque to future generations, including my own. I'd really like to imagine an Ireland that is um, really nice to be in itself. I'm talking about walking down the street, um, green spaces, public areas, um, nice places to settle. Very simple thing, but I think it would just make such a lovely, lovely difference to our lovely little country. What I want is people to want change. Because our generation is the future of Ireland, and so I think we can make a difference. Place Kainzor, Leo from Mesa Hoyge, Tom An Buyachas and Sanga, An Brodulas and Sanga, Al Kiatan Fein, Patroch and Lefal and Shanyov, Patachiat and Lefal and Akila. I mean, Irish young people are huge stakeholders in the country and in the future of the country, so it's very important to get young Irish people on board and to get them involved in rebuilding the country. The primary idea amongst our group in the workshop was an equal Ireland, an equal era, I suppose you could say, in where people are not judged or not discriminated against. Uh, equality was mentioned a lot, which is really encouraging. Education, um, access as well um, for people of various disabilities. I uh, think as if I'm a person living with a disability, I came up with things that I've, I have a problem with living in Ireland that mean a lot to me. So. A lot of it was about mental health and another topic was entrepreneurship and how lots of people should really be involved in business and be encouraged to be involved in business. A few people like sitting around in a table come up with so many ideas like the sheet that we had in front of us, the brainstorm, it was packed of ideas and we didn't, we actually like ran out of space to write everything in because people were really getting like involved and into it. Because I think it's, it's really important that people, young people have a, have a say in society. Uh, just sharing ideas with people from all across the island and seeing what they thought and voicing our ideas together so that we can actually make a mutual solution to the problems. I think something like this is very important because the voice of the youth is going to be heard. I want people to stop talking about them and get them to actually do it. It's up to yourselves now to decide not only how you can have a vision, but also that you can identify any obstacles that stand in its way. The possibilities are there to deliver it to Ireland into the future, and above all else, to put the stamp of Irishness and humanity on it, something of which we can all be proud. So have a great day. Thank you very much.
I'd like to now welcome the viewers of the 61 News who are joining us both at home and online. Agsanish, Kurig Tror, Desna Ron Forteha, Turhi and Chuskadiv Ilar. Erdus, Leroig Maria Quinn, Adrasla Ercherlin Vinacon. Take it away, Maria. What struck me the most was the strong sense, the desire, the want to have an Ireland that we, the young Irish, can be proud of. A hard-working, prosperous Ireland, which sets an example for those around it. We want to see Ireland take its place in the centre of Europe and make the comeback we know it deserves. We have ambition, but not greed. And we want to see this present in our new Ireland. We want Ireland to be strong. We envisage ourselves as being strong and having a backbone, as opposed to being naive and wanting a wishbone. A key vision found in the report was the vision of strong empl employment levels in Ireland. While some people believed it was awful that so many of our young people are being forced to emigrate, others believed that emigration was used to enrich our young people and ultimately would contribute to a stronger Ireland. Another vision for Ireland was an Ireland that had learned from its mistakes, an Ireland void of greed. A small number of us believed that rather than being driven by greed, as had happened in the past, we would be driven by a common sense of purpose for the welfare of the state and each other. Prejudice submissions from young people were very few. The majority were seeking to promote a fair, inclusive model of social security and labour market participation. An innovative Ireland was a vision expressed by so many of us. We see ourselves as a creative Ireland, which can contribute so much to the world culturally. In music, dance, theatre, sport and so on. All of which have the potential for different types of employment. Moving on from employment, the next part of our vision for Ireland was a politically reformed one, with an increased level in participation and democratic engagement. While there was a sense that an inclusion in politics needed to be promoted, with young people especially needing to become more involved, there was a stronger sense that the government had to do something to enact this change, encouraging the involvement of young people. Inclusivity, engagement with young people, tax reform and constitutional reform were all present in this vision. Something which transpired through this initiative was how seriously we believed our education system needs reformed. Rather than learning for the sake of learning, the report shows the want for a broader education system, allowing us to become self-reliant, being active and participating in society. Within the section of education, there were calls for CPSE to become a priority within education, as did the reform of the teaching of the Irish language and how it is taught. Another aspect of our vision for Ireland was an embracing Ireland, which helps to promote multiculturalism. And the following quote, I believe, crystallises the thoughts of how many participants in the area thought on equality. My vision for Ireland of the future is one where the intrinsic value of each individual is recognised, where those in power strive to fulfil the basic needs of every individual and to respect and protect their basic rights. We are the young people and we need to be heard. An Ireland which promotes a youth voice was persistent in the vision for Ireland. With fantastic opportunities like this one, being presented across the island of Ireland. This lack of political engagement with the youth is expressed clearly in the following quote. I believe it should be more accessible for young people to get involved in politics. I have never once heard any of my friends say, let's go to a political meeting. We could certainly add valuable ideas to the government if we were listened to. A positive Ireland was advocated by so many of our young people. 
the theme of getting together was important. To work together as a team, united for the common cause, to bring back economic prosperity to the Irish economy, to combat the air of negativity that is overshadowing our true nature. And with all shoulders behind the wheel, we can get Ireland back to where it should be. A can-do, daring attitude was encouraged to build upon the Cape of Ulster, to make Ireland great again, to make people want to come back again and again, to show off our country and to show off our culture. An Ireland which has learned from its mistakes, but gone back to its basics, was a strong vision. When it came to our health care, a fair and equal health system was called for, ensuring that people didn't have to seek and pay for private health care in order to be looked after when they needed it most. A fair health system, not one which is used and abused and paid for by taxpayers, but not one which is 100% private and overly expensive. And Ireland as a community was a vision expressed. This, which was lost during the boom years, should be refound now during the hard times and kept for when things get better. It is this spirit of togetherness and community that appears to give meaning and belonging to individual lives in a variety of settings, from the cradle to the grave. Importance is the very thing we crave in life. We want to look into the eyes of our fellow, fellow countrymen and women and see that they want us to work for them, socialise with them, share our lives with them. And why not? Money comes and goes, but that feeling remains right to our very last breath. When it came to our identity as being Irish, tradition and heritage were considered as critical aspects of identity. But there is also a sense that Irish should be borrowed from this and from an understanding of where we fit in the modern world. Furthermore, an increased use of the Irish language was called for and envisaged to learn Irish as Irish and not as a translation of English. This quote summarises this. We can start speaking Irish more in our daily lives, such as on the pitch in a game of football or hurling. The fact that younger people look up to and try to copy what people a year or two older do matters. It means that if we, as 18 to 22 year olds, start incorporating the Irish language into matches, they will imitate us and thus start the ball rolling for the revival of the Irish language. Ultimately, this report has shown that the young people envisage a changed Ireland, a strong, pros positive, prosperous Ireland of which we are all proud to be a part of. President Higgins said it best in Monaghan when he said, that nothing is inevitable and everything can be changed. And it is through this change we will realise our vision for a new Ireland. Thank you. Next up is Claudia Horrow, who will speak on what we need to what we need to achieve to make this happen. Hello everyone, my name is Claudia Horro and I attended the Dublin Regional Workshop. So we've just heard from Maria what our vision is and I'm here to present some of the outcomes of the report which dealt with the second question post, posed to us by President Higgins and that was, what needs to happen in order to make our vision possible. When I was asked to present on this area, I decided to strip the question down and think of it in its simplest form and how I best identified with it. And the best e example I could come up with was the experience I had as a child moving to Ireland. I thought about the vision my parents had for us, the changes we had to make, obviously the most obvious change was moving from Kenyan weather to Irish weather. But not just in our daily lives, also in our thinking. We continued to embrace and celebrate our Irish culture 
as we always had when we lived in Kenya. But also, we maintained and respected our African ethnicity. And being in Ireland allowed us to do that. It's from that thinking that I realized it's not about going back to our former glory. It's not about getting back to where we were. We can't turn back time. It's about learning from our mistakes, accepting change, which is hard. But if we want to see differences, we need to do this. And we need to move on. So with that in mind, I started to look at some of the outcomes of the report. So the report outlines key themes that, I, that are, were identified at the regional workshops and through the online submissions. And I'll just give you a flavour about some of the more dominant themes and some of the action points that were suggested with those. So the first one was employment, enterprise, social security and concern about the economic downturn. Some of the concrete points that came out of that was that we need to be more innovative. We need to emphasize working together, capitalize on our resources, and young people that struggle to find work should be offered placements and internships in the public and private sector, allowing them to be actively engaged in the working world and learning and putting their new skills to use. There was also a call to change our thinking from a knowledge economy to more of a creative thinking economy. And, of course, and very importantly, opportunities to be created for the transfer of knowledge from the older cohorts and more experienced cohorts in, Irish, in, Irish, in Ireland to younger groups. The next area that was uh, quite dominant was in the sector of education. Both first and second level curricula should be reformed to include a much greater emphasis on civic participation. Another action point suggested was that a fair chance of access to third level must be guaranteed with equitable charges and grants. Also that second level curricula should introduce more continuous assessment and reduce the reliance it has on the dated end of year exam model. It was also suggested that built into the curricula should be a system whereby students earn marks and points for volunteering. Again here, a shift in thinking is called for. From attitudes around education to move from learning for exams to learning for life. It was also very strong in the report that it should be made compulsory that schools at both primary and secondary level strongly implement equality and diversity programs, ensuring that from a young age, children are being educated about valuing people, regardless of their race or religion. And about also about the negative effects of racism on individuals and society. The next area is political and legislative reform. It was suggested that voting should be held on Saturdays. It was also suggested that the voting age be reduced to 16. It was also suggested that a national youth consultation process needs to be established where the views of young people on political issues can be heard. In accordance with this, that each constituency should establish a youth forum allowing TDs to meet regularly with young people in order to gain a better understanding of their issues, opinions and ideas. It was also very strong in the report that separating church and state by developing a secular constitution respecting all affiliations should take place. Also, follow-up programmes on this Being Young and Irish initiative, which all of us, I think, feel very honoured to be part of, was mentioned in the report. Next, the promotion of Irish language and culture and national identity. One of the key Sorry. One of the key suggestions was that the Department of Education should examine successful models for preserving Irish or languages in other countries, for example, in Wales, and they should apply it to Ireland. In terms of health, it was suggested that the development of a new energised public health campaign targeted at young people and adolescents, 
that is as pervasive and creative as the advertising campaigns of the alcoholic industry. Particular focus was made here on mental health. We know that unaddressed mental health issues can lead to physical illness, increase the stress on our hospitals, and increase the cost to the individual and the state. Therefore, a complete overhaul of how we look, currently look at mental health services was called for, and a recognition that one solution does not fit all. A quote that solidifies that came from a young person from the Dublin workshop who said that too many people are dying because they aren't aware of the help that is there, and too often they can't get the help they need when they look. I'm a young person whose mental health service does not help me. I don't want to end up as a number among the hundreds who take their lives each year. We need change and we need it now. We need to create more easily accessible mental health facilities for young people. Investing in more computer assisted counselling services, promoting more television programmes devoted to issues such as depression, anxiety and suicide. And finally, embracing change and diversity and equality. This was a very strong point that came up in the report. With a number of different suggestions, creating entry points for leadership positions to be taken up in the community, in the workplace and in government by people from varying diverse backgrounds was seen as very important as a way of creating more visible role models for young people. Creating an awareness and promoting respect of all people living in Ireland providing simple information that would dispel myths and assert the realities. And to conclude, as a proud Irish woman who is equally proud of her Kenyan heritage, I want to put a call out to each and every one of you to take responsibility and to make sure that diversity in Ireland is viewed as enriching Irish culture and not diluting it. President Higgins asked us to be the arrow and not the target. And I want to ask you not to be the sun, but the puddle of water that reflects it. Goromila Mahagat. Goromagat Fane Claudia. Oxenish, Began Kirkyuk, David Barry Aguin, to speak about what we as young people can do to achieve this vision. My name is David Berry and I'm going to talk to you about what it is we as young people can do to change Ireland. Participants were very certain that they could make a difference and felt they had a lot to offer. However, we just feel that we need to make ourselves heard. They were equally certain that it was our uh, responsibility to take ch uh, charge of this and to make a change. To quote, I think fellow young people can help by becoming more active in their own communities Change begins with each and every individual. A recurring theme was that we as young people have to change ourselves first and then change others and finally change the world. To quote, young people need to improve their image. I believe young people should be more interested in politics. Imagine the energy, entrepreneurialism and outright honesty we could bring to Dáil Éireann. I want to see my generation and the one after getting off their laptops and iPads and into the streets protesting the cost of living, cost of rent, upholding the dignity of the sick, poor and uneducated like the founders of this country who wanted the people to walk freely, be educated freely and follow their faith freely. There's a lot to be said about getting out onto the street, but as you can see from today where we were trending on Twitter all day, there's a lot to be said from using the... Um, resources that we have ourselves, our Facebooks, our Twitters, all our social media to make our voices heard. Young people getting involved takes many forms. And in equality, for example, we can learn sign language. Irish sign language, uh, if we learned it, could effectively um, annul a disability 
all it takes is for everyone to learn something like, hi, my name's David. How are you? Effectively, we can help people by uh, taking it on ourselves to learn these things. On collective action, people felt that we as students and young people need to come together with student unions and colleges and other youth groups and work on a collective front to make a change. This is something that's already being done with, uh, throughout colleges uh, with the Union of Students of Ireland and through uh, youth groups. On political engagement, at least one person, we felt, aged between 16 and 18, should be elected to the Council of State. And then we feel that there will, we will have more engagement with government. On political engagement, people felt that they needed to get more involved in youth groups, in student unions, uh, to campaign and lobby, and especially to use our vote. We need to become informed. We need to educate ourselves so that we can educate others. We need to become active citizens and volunteer. Uh, we need to promote equality and cherish diversity and promote, um, sorry, we need to challenge uh, stereotypes and show respect. We need to be proud of our Irish heritage through our language and through our culture. With regards to political engagement, we need to encourage others to register and use their vote and we need to use our own votes. For example, one initiative I saw was that uh, people presented a resource where people could um, sign on the voting register, where Gardaí were available to, in one day, allow people to register for the vote. We need to protest, we need to make our voices heard by writing letters and marching, and we need to visit our TDs. People um, also uh, said in the report that we need to get educated. We need to learn from our peers what it is that makes them stigmatised. We need to get training from uh, groups like the Samaritans, from our colleges, um, fr from uh, initiatives like Safe Talk and Applied Suicide Intervention Support uh, Training. Uh, we need to learn ISL, as I've said, and attend things like LGBT um, education uh, initiatives. We need to educate others then once we've educated ourselves via ally campaigns, simply wearing a wristband and telling people why it is that we're wearing it and then uh, organising campaigns ourselves to show our peers what it is we are doing to get involved. We need to be active a as a group, is what we uh, decided in our report. We can join societies and, club and clubs in colleges and outside of colleges um, by getting involved in colleges ourselves, or in clubs ourselves, we can um, facilitate others like ourselves to get involved. For example, I'm a kayaker myself, and I was the first kayaker in my club in a wheelchair. Now, our, my club is far more um, able to take on other people in wheelchairs, and I feel everyone in this room can do that, and that's what we thought we could do. We can join the youth branch of a political party or SU, and then we can change them from the be for the better once uh, we have engaged with them. We felt from uh, our findings that we need to discourage apathy and use things like social networks to get our peers to get involved. As I say, we need to change ourselves, then we can change others, and then we can change the world. We felt that we need to promote equality, enforce ideals of equality in your community and our colleges and our schools. We also felt that uh, Irish pride can be uh, facilitated by using the language more, by um, expressing our own pride in our culture and our language. We uh, felt that some uh, urban areas should be designated as Gaeltacht areas, and to do this, we need to contact our TDs. We need to use what we have. For example, I'm being trained in psychology and I'm doing psychological reports on the attitudes towards minority groups. But equally, people in the arts and people in journalism can use what they have to um, express what it is they want to be changed. We need to stay positive, and this was probably one of the most important things that came out of the report. We need to change from an Ireland that is possibly expressed in depression, both emotionally and economically, to one that returns to an Ireland of hospitality, of, positive, of positivism, and we need to express to the world that we are still the fighting Irish, and we will fight for positivism, 
positivism and for progress in this country. We also need to award innovation. We need to encourage our peers to get involved. And then we felt that through the awarding of innovation that more innovation will be offered up by our peers. Finally, to reiterate once more, we felt that we can change ourselves first and then we can change our peers, our families. And finally, we can change the world and then we can take charge of change. Thank you. Bula bus over for all of the presenters, please. Paula and I will now hand you over to Neve Donnelly and Cormac Brannock, who will present the Take Charge of Change declaration to the President and Government representatives here today on behalf of the almost 800 people who took part in the Being Young and Irish 2012. The moment we have all been waiting for. Drum roll, please. And Jarvu Glockanis Ernahru. The Take Charge of Change Declaration. Ari, Ara Augustavana Ushle. Falcheroiv Higkade Seminar and Uxeron, Mihal D. O'Higgin, on Oige August Internicus, Gavila Sidoyeg. Le Che Vianus, Dest on Tukteron, Le Nachmor, Ukt Gade Dinna Og, August Leshna Kate Dinna Og Ella, a land on Chunskilusha, Erlina, August Snamian Hoshilta. President, Ministers, August Cordy Galer, welcome to Being Young and Irish 2012, Michael D. Higgins' first presidency seminar. On Kay Dinna Ogatan Shulin and you, August Adrastal Erna Cardlin and Reg Unica, Temple Natira in Me Vanfor, Honig Sheet Huggin, Okara Hird in Natira Shah, August Ahasla Mara, Gul Unidehe, Ervor Fubble Naher and Harlar on Shulin and you, Koma. Earlier this week, we all received a draft copy of the Being Young and Irish 2012 report that was published and released today to media. The report captures the contributions, thoughts, and ideas of almost 800 young people. It is organized into 10 themes, ranging from unemployment and enterprise and political reform to community and civil engagement and equality. Ni funyer imagine chaktanis la holas nua ak harkyan na ran far to hegeler on jarvu glak kanis eran ahru a korfer fuivor maraid anish. It's more kind of stisborg a renew er madin ag er fuinaturmi a vila kar in our tosiak de marain leshen vukliak fein agus in Yaran Nadala, Glockmer voted Dain Lahak, Agus is Ahaslamarag, will Gokdin Agan Sasa, Gurb Eatasa Jaravu, Glock Canis Eran Ahru, Na an Ishata Agan, and Ilan Shah, Snablinta Ata Makroin. I am glad to say that every one of us here today is happy that this Take Charge of Change declaration um, represents what we envision for, envision for the future of our Ireland. Marshin, an Ishata Agan, and here. There are three parts of this declaration. Our vision, what needs to happen to achieve our vision, and our commitment to making this happen. I have in my hands a copy of the Take Charge of Change declaration. So without further ado, we will now read the declaration. Isi an ishata agan de ern, stat tuta mwininak il changak, agalakin gokdinus in arav. Stat egawil chorus idjikish, Slainte agus takiyakta sosialte den sko. Am I chakt e kak arhu? Era er fejerlin e vep rodul asti godaunde. Ait a gohiter agus a verbriter dini. Nahaline an kultur an irakt sport agus an gwege. Ni mor duin turt fui achoru politiokta er vaun korasak. Bavinlin level ard kor agus ko ibra sosialte agus pobel a ekal. Marain le mohu naseranak de Genevi, Rudi Hintoi, Gadorfer cooked, Agus Cousins dive shoed at Hal Yokalak, Agus Ganyan for Kurum dive. Ait my mass, Agus Luke, er Kyarta and Dinna, Ait in Lakfer, Lagak Seranak, Agus Mimid Mortisak, Astu Ille, 
agus aitha mai ruchtan koanan agus deshna koanan e kark satoki agus start is quid den isha ta agen an ra gelagrak kultur na fiontriakta agus deshna edikish agus fostiakta de kark aitha man dini oga alan khamasamak a will tauki hlan rompu amak agus doctor klus eshtak de klus le hashtag dive agus id ser on imrika egentak agus ulak on ikish nashunta is mainlin ka my mass agus luke ka hitter nashunta er spirit fiontriakta er via er khardiakt er hargi er hecknoliakt agus er nualakt na hern tigamit gul ahantas nashunta uhul agin o hev kultur stara Changa agus alin agus a havati is a tashe agus mudig iri an ish at a ha agin to hauki na hern avantamak. Our vision for Ireland is a secular, inclusive, multilingual, confident state with excellent and universally accessible education, health, and social support systems. An Ireland of which we can be proud of on a global stage. A place where people, arts, culture, heritage, sport, and the Irish language are nurtured and developed. We have to engage in a process of systematic politi political reform. We envisage high levels of social and community cohesion and cooperation, and a sense of ac active citizenship, ensuring the vulnerable are empowered, protected, and cared for, and a place where human rights are valued. Where there is an acceptance and celebration of all citizens, and where all people have equality of access, equality of opportunity in a society and in the state. Our vision includes economic prosperity, an enterprise culture, and the opportunity for education and employment for all. A place where young people reach their potential, have a solid future, and a valued voice, free from forced immigration and the burden of national debt. Irish entrepreneurial spirit, food, craft, product, technology, and innovation will be valued internationally. We recognize our unique culture, historical, linguistic, and artistic national identity in pursuit of our vision for our, the future of Ireland. Marshin, na nihe is ga tarlu kan an ish sha avantamak. Kor hege ahnute ga quid e dakele munye na goelge er level na har test america. Over a wan egentuk a yurian er lawrt na changa, agus over el aronuk a yurian er litriakt na goelge a my agus my goel skolene mar vaun doiv. Rachtiak the end of the cas ex agus referent ve agen er ginvile. Deshna kainte socialte a Herbert den Gelge. Konen is poste agus kjarte oktehe a ve aun in our era. Rachtiak the end of lena vetek seranig ta last muet da da daukjanter agus harlar vote a chav again. Factus egdina oge konen teran gnivuk a chahu. Ahentis the Uber Yonak agus the Run Farchiukt Fubel Ibuinti on CAO. Muinu the Arnold Nahoige a Chohu agus Vedu. Achoru na Har Testamerikte Run Farchiukt Gnivuk se Shomaranga agus Deshin a Faulama er Fan Thiel. Cook the Hurt and Realchus Achul. Onus Nak Mai er Ar Guid Onidehe Nashunte na Tidina. In mon na politiyakte parosti. Rangan of fuile in mon skolene agus in irvon skolene kon idikas akhar er guini oge idaka leshen eg sulakt leshen guin olingt agus le chog laka. Muinu bresha de idikas rikdenis specialte agus de curriculum lahnehe technoliyakte fashneshe eran tria level. Start tuta avante mak de eran. Achoru er curriculum er an dara level kon beim nismo alagen er an idikus politiyakte. Shkem fostiyakte de chem nehe bonehe er skillene avrhe. Now I will present to you the actions that we the young people feel are necessary to achieve our vision for Ireland. Number one, a renewal, a renewed dual approach to teaching Irish at leaving certificate level. The first compulsory subject focus on speaking. The second, optional subject, focus on literature and driven by the foundation of Grailskolana. Number two, we are calling for legislation on the X case. 
and a referendum to be held on the issue of abortion. Number three, we want development of social opportunities for the Irish language. Number four, we, in relation to LGBT, want to make marriage equality and adoption rights a reality. Number five, we want to legislate for absent, absentee voting for citizens outside of their constituencies and abroad. Number six, we want a campaign by young people to promote active citizenship. Number seven, we want CAO points recognition for volunteering and community involvement. Number eight, we want um, sustain and increase funding for the youth sector and leaving certificate reform, hands-on class participation and opportunities for lifelong learning. Number 10, we want our local government to be empowered so that our national representative don't have to engage in parochial politics. Number 11, we want dedica dedicated classes in primary and post-primary schools to educate young people on diversity, tolerance and acceptance. Number 12, we want more funding for special education needs and um, broaden IT curriculum at second level. Number 13, we wish to pursue a secular Irish state. Number 14, we want curriculum reform at second level to include greater emphasis on political education. And number 15, we want a graduate employment scheme based on relevant skills, not a job bridge. Thank you. Marshin on Hud Yaranach to show show a and Yalamid a Yenif con an East Show of Antimach. Tugumid Gallons can I broimid a Wahaleshan Ahru, Trinavet Ran Fartuk, a Kabe level is level is ga in Agriacti, it are Fartahe Polichiacta, Aintis Vaklain, Groupi Oige, Agriacti Karnakta, no Groupi Tahanta. Tugumid Gallons, Gamid Ran Fartuk. Gagurumid mid hain erin olis, agus gagurumid con geneve. Tugumid gallunt, gamamid las, gamanamid las as our skillene, agus as our grohehacht. Don chacht er rechig nua er ibena socialte, agus de un rechig shin a curavim. Tugalor deshna aun con an tahru a cur igneve. Agus er nakin is giradun, di of shin, tamud fwain, agus ar jailig. Our bubble fan, August Marshinde. Is doi lin, garbalic eid, and uber yonic, August in Teronic, Genevac, con luke in a pubble, a car con keen, August con in cooked, a hurt, the gake and dinner agon, argion fan, yenov. August is balic eid, darlin, len and yen for Geneve in our era. Tugumi gallunt, garak meeting lek, le stigma, le hitter yalu, August le clantuct. Tomid mache, er luke, gok vote, mar heronic. A carcon keen, August Tugumid Gallant, Gamanamid Lass, as Gok Vote, er level Nashunta, August Antis Orpig. August Gamai Tishkint Agen, Erin Tli, Arakig, and Ni, Da Willamidig Votal, Ivaim Arin. Ni Mordun, Karaguina Jarka, Nos Komalum, Atag Dina Oga, August Egbuil Nasuki, Ilet Na Polichiakta. Da on Jarka Jarfak, August Ran Fartiakt, a Kohu. Tormid ar nuhlan fein agus duhlan dina ele seil slanchul it ar cullin agus intin a chahav. Ni mordun las avant as in spirit is feder lin, a ve brodul as ar dir agus as ar janga, agus as mor ekti an nashun sha agane e gursi technoliakta, sport, kjol, kultur agus valjkish. Baimid fein in ar neshim lari agus an gyalun sha a kolina agan. Glockamid kyanis ar anahru. And now, for the young people's commitment to achieving this vision. We commit to work towards change by getting involved at whatever level. In organisations, be they political parties, student unions, youth groups, charitable organisations or advocacy groups. We commit to get involved, get informed and get active. We commit to harnessing our creativity and skills to come up with and implement new solutions to social problems. There are many opportunities to implement change, starting with ourselves and our immediate families and communities, and then extending outwards. We see volunteering and active citizenship as ways of promoting community values and empowering each other to make a difference. And we see this as a route to concrete action. 
we commit to challenging stigma, discrimination and prejudice. We aim to promote the value of every vote as citizens and we commit to use every vote at local, national and EU levels and to understand the impact of what we vote for. We need to fight against apathy about politics and society among young people, to encourage positivity and participation. We will challenge ourselves and others to lead healthy lifestyles, both mental and physical. We need to harness our can-do spirit, be proud of our country and of our language, and our nation's great achievements in technology, sport, music, culture and hospitality. We will lead by example to fulfill this commitment. We will take charge of change. Gurmila Mahagas of Osage Duklin. We would now like to invite our president, Michael D. Higgins, to give his response. Well, in Gaitel Shias, Fiak, Uktron, and Be, Idirpe, and Foot and Down, Brodul, Ass, and Coriloher, and Tommy Strich, the Oil, Tronona. Any president of any country in the world would be enormously proud of the presentation that we have just had. So, in my fragre, Bawalnes mean lam buikas aglaka yipsha, a guini oga, as an upper at her upper crua at her. Korishtiaka giniwan do new, akar nemisa. Nadini oga gleire lachport te, se kolo kain mader leschen oge agasin teranakas. Agastisha ilia katalium a new. Agasis me eringetal shias is binlam a mahan hin, because a son with an killer safe in firkin fosha, a dairy row of gleire, gudi anait shot un chaksha. Is making me Gamarino is mean la Mawika so cree, a glark a lechenera, lech netini ne iana es sulia elia, a will on cork taca, a gawil shitelioher, is not in igleer at lock port, is Santokreshan. Minister and friends, and above all else, uh, young people's representatives, because all of you represent so many other young people. As I have just said, as President of Ireland, I'm enormously moved and proud by what you have just indicated, the different, different, uh, the different dimensions of the vision you have, with its strongly ethical focus on equality of all kinds, political, economic, social and cultural, and something that is coming through in all the conversations with young people, affective equality. That is, the, what I mentioned this morning, the way that we care and care, care for others, and the way that people are cared for, and the language that is used in our discourse as citizens, as a task of transformation, and the honesty and integrity with which every single presentation you've just heard said that transformation begins with the person and moves on through families and institutions, through communities. So my wish is that everything in, by way of that, that generosity of spirit, will inform all those, all those who are listening. And I am sure the essence of that will be communicated to government by the minister whom I'm so grateful to see here, and also by the other representatives of the institutions of state in administrative practice. In my inauguration speech, uh, speech last, year, last November, just over a year ago, I said that I would host a number of presidency seminars, and that these would go beyond, as it were, uh, uh, respecting the constitutional borders of my, my, of my office, and its independence too, that it would go beyond immediate legislative proposals which belong in another place, but that it would address themes that were important to the shared life of the Irish people. And I decided that the first of these seminars would be about being young in Ireland, 
but quickly changed it to take into account the theme of being young and Irish insofar as so many young Irish people had already left the country. And they are as important to me as any other Irish people wherever they live. So from the very first written contributions and through all the consultation workshops, I've been very much struck by the generosity of the participants, their generosity with their time, which is obvious. And if anyone was in any doubt now to that myth that goes around that young people are disaffected, disengaged or cynical, there is the answer. They came forward. They came forward in their own time. But not only that, they were generous in the spirit that they brought in sharing of themselves their strengths and vulnerabilities. I felt that that latter part is something that is very important to me. That is, sometimes people gather together as citizens, celebrating great successes, which is very important, those moments of celebration when we are all together. But it is even more important for us to take into ourselves the vulnerability of each citizen and make it part of our collective responsibility. And that was present. Malam Gamur on Spridvite Fjord and Rotherfad. Agus Kamali Shintoshi Tovaktak on Rain, the Snaturmi, Totor Fedjara, Egne Reg, Egne, 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 it's come up in the Monacon, no him lockly a gurkig, no a gahanaka of a fame. I think that what is very important in the presentations you have just heard, na carilloher than ska, a veer fall do him. Look at wouldn't anybody want, if you like, leadership to come from the people who gave presentations of this quality mm. and this value, and so to do so so effectively. And to do so, lest anybody in any doubt, in both of our languages, in Oilge, August, in Emerla. Gara mila mila maha ki galiet, or I was going to say, on otra vet, on kedur orelia. I think that what is demonstrated in what we have heard is an impressive capacity for reflection, a deep concern for justice and equality. Equality in all its dimensions, I repeat again, political, economic, social, cultural, and also effective equality, as Kathleen Lynch and others writes about it. The promise which was offered to us this evening of an ethical and insightful people who are capable not just of transforming themselves, but are offering visions as to how our institutional structure needs and must be reformed. The Take Charge of Change Declaration sets out a challenging vision. It sets out the views of what is people, a vision itself, what needs to happen to achieve it, and their promise, which you've just heard in Gjallund, that they will play their part in achieving the Ireland they wish for. And that is my invitation to you all here today. I am expressing my fervent hope that we will cooperate with these peop young people in realising a transformed Ireland. And my future seminars will continue that theme of transformation in different ways. This, what you have just heard, this what has gone on since last May, and this with what has been taking place in the regions and in the workshops. It must not be a lost conversation, a lost consultation that was simply concluded in November 2012. It is my wish as president that it find a real, rapid and positive response at every level, political and institutional. Let me say just a few things that struck me as I was listening here this afternoon to the report from the workshops. It is very interesting to hear the views on unemployment and also the wide consideration that there is there that work is what is important as an aspect of the human person. I think there was a great emphasis on something that was beyond any narrow version of technical innovation, an emphasis on creativity, on excellence in everything that we do. That was very important, as was the stress on, in the political theme, as it was discussed here, about inclusivity, of, in education, the importance of citizenship. Why could not Irish people at second level be aware of all the philosophical choices that are there, as, are the, as takes place in some other countries? As well as that, about social education at primary level. These are not just little tweaks that are given to the curriculum at either primary or secondary level. We have this statement from young people. 
They want the tools in education to be active citizens. I think as well, the emphasis on equality. Equality and having the courage to say it, not just equality of economic kind, but equality in every aspect of life. And in health, the basic difference that is there between, if you like, being able to purchase the consequences of ill health and how different that is from the right to health, the right, the right to live in a healthy society. I think as well, the notion, the vision about Ireland as a community, Ireland as a community with a memory, and Ireland as a community with a wonderful, diverse imagination that sees difference and diversity as riches rather than any kind of discomfort. That is very, very powerful. The wonderful way in which stigma is addressed and inclusion in every sense is stress. The idea of Ireland as well, in terms of language, of a borderless culture, being able to draw not only in what is past and imagined in the future from within our own borders, but from other cultures that have been brought to us. I think that all of this, in all of the presentations that you have got, it just is such a wide range. I know of nobody who would be, in fact, not be very proud of the way in which the time has been spent, the work put in. I think as well <coughs> that I'm saying this in conclusion. As we look together towards a shared future, it is important that we build our society on strong foundations of trust. That means realizing that trust has been broken by so many institutions. But this does not mean that we do not need trust. Trust has to be reforged. And you have heard from young people who have both the intention, the capacity, the will, and the moral strength to build trust again in our institution and interpersonal behavior, something that is very important. And they have given meaning, as they spelled it out, to what they mean by participatory citizenship. Citizenship as a source of solidarity, a source of energy, something that binds and drives community into nehi jarafaka, togli jarafaka, positive projects that will, of course, bring employment and honour self-work. It is to realise the transformative power that is there in our society. It has to be associated with something that is not narrowly construed as civil and political rights, but as I've already said, social, cultural, economic and effective rights, the right to be cared for, the right for one's dignity to be expressed and shared with others, irrespective of means or circumstances, or indeed whether you live within the boundaries of Ireland or not, or wherever you came from. So the opportunity must be given for the fulfilment of all of these rights. Is and it is through this comprehensive citizenship that has been described for us that we will, in fact, move past any present difficulties on to be the kind of country of which we are capable, capable of realising all those endless possibilities of which I regularly encounter expressions. They have already started all over the country. I refer to them as the possibilities without end. And then how are we to decide this? You've heard this day belongs to the young people. They led the discussions in the regions. They led it with their submissions. And they led it with the Karelohe here this evening. They led it with their presentation and how well they did it. Participatory decision-making in times of change requires not only the strengthening of the voice and the capacities of people who are often excluded from decision-making, but on reforming. And this is why I'm so honoured by so many senior decision makers and decision formers, knowing as I do the dis distinction between decision forming, decision shaping and decision taking, that you are all here. I hope that the reforms that are necessary in the institutions of democracy will take place and that these voices this afternoon have been heard in a meaningful manner. There is so much exciting and challenging work to be done, but I'm very confident that the young, committed people will play their part in reshaping that future. You have heard their commitment. So the presentations you've heard and the Take Charge of Change Declaration, 
They're based on findings of the consultation as collated and presented in a research report, and I'd like to thank them for it, by the Dublin Institute of Technology. From their work, a wide range of proposals for actions have been identified. My office will forward these actions to the relevant agencies and departments in the coming days to invite these bodies to play their part in achieving and delivering this transformed Ireland you have heard described. It is my hope that those agencies will embrace the opportunity presented to them here today by the participants, the opportunity to strengthen our society to accept the change that is necessary, the transformation that is important to deepen our citizenship and give us an Irishness to be proud of. In line with the vision of these reflective and committed young citizens is a powerful one, and it can be a great vindication of our shared public world. Together we can solve all of our problems if we have the willingness to be open to the change they describe. I particularly want uh, to thank Minister Frances Fitzgerald for joining us today and for responding, and she will on behalf of the government, to the proposals and the challenge that has been put to us. The tremendous commitment reflected in the contributions and other workshops over this year to creating an Ireland based on fairness, diversity and respect for human rights values has been exciting and inspiring. And I hope that all you here have the opportunity to go on to our website at www.president.ie and read the summary of the findings. And it will fill us all with not just hope, but such a strong sense of what can be achieved by taking charge of change. Now, I have many particular people to thank, and I will do so at the reception just in a, just a little while. But now, I just want to say at this stage, as President of Ireland, Mar Mokhtaran Eheran, Das na dini oga, a queer na malti shahi lohar, gara mila mahake, agas ta me vuyak tiv ni huan as an upper arinu shi vinyu, ag har na miasa, agas eg na krenye eesulius na region, agas ta me maralak brodul koma, as an mwinyin ta agi, ni huan an ta hefein, ag as mwinta ni heran, in nish agas an ta aki. Gar a mili me me mahake as aklor aibre as ur fish agas as an gyalun to tartoke aake derin don tauki. Gar a mili mahake. Thank you again, President Higgins. Now I'd like to invite Minister Francis Fitzgerald to respond on behalf of the government to the Being Young and Irish Taking Charge of Change Declaration. Good afternoon, everyone. President Higgins, young people and distinguished guests. Thank you, President Higgins, for giving me the opportunity uh, to be here this afternoon with you and to hear the wonderful presentations, which were so positive and inspiring. I am delighted to join the President in welcoming the Take Charge of Change Declaration. I also wish to pay tribute, not just to the impressive work that has taken place here today in developing the Declaration, but to the detailed consultations with young people overseen by President Higgins earlier this year. Albert Einstein said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Our challenges at local, national and global levels are a consequence of deeply ingrained social patterns that have evolved over many years your generation will decide what must be changed and what might be retained. We need, as President Higgins often says, we need your best and freshest thinking in the years ahead. I spent many years working for equality for women, mystified to find people who saw giving more rights and voice to women as being at the expense of men. What nonsense. Equal participation by women in decision making is in everyone's interests. It improves the quality of decisions and contributes greater social cohesion in implementing the results. 
The same is true of the greater participation of young people. Having your voice heard and bringing about change are not easily achieved. However, it must start with developing a vision and a set of priorities. The report completed on the Being Young and Irish consultation and today's declaration are a tremendous starting point for advocating for your priorities for a new and better Ireland. And it was inspiring to hear you speak today about your vision for an Ireland, as the President said, of equality, personal, social, political and cultural. Of course, we should not expect consensus in all areas. Being young and Irish means different things to different people. However, many areas of common interest and shared commitment have been identified by you. As a member of government, I will undertake to work with you and the President to ensure full attention is given to your findings. As Minister for Children and Youth Affairs, I am of course fully committed to the participation of young people in decision making. The Department of Children and Youth Affairs supports and promotes the work of 34 Corlin and Oak, which act as local youth councils for those aged 12 to 18. There has been significant developments in the work of Corlin and Oak, and only last week I attended with the Taoiseach at the Corlin and Oak National Showcase in Croke Park. 500 young people from around the country were there, and they showcased their work at local level on a range of important issues for them and their communities and a wide range, I'm glad to say, of national and local decision makers engaged with them on that day. We have learned much from the development of Corlin and Oak and Dolan and Oak about the supports and infrastructure which young people need if their voice is to be heard. Greater consideration needs to be given to participation by young people in the upper age ranges. It is sometimes assumed that young people over 18 have the vote and are therefore as well positioned as anyone else to influence decisions. It's encouraging, for example, that recent CSO figures suggest a significant increase in the number of 18 to 24 year olds voting in the last general election. However, as the experience of the women's movement shows, the franchise is only the starting point in having your voice heard. The quality standards for youth services overseen by my department, for example, emphasise the central importance of the recognition of young people's voice, vision and input into the running of youth services. The canvas for young people's participation, however, must be a much broader one than the youth sector alone. In developing our youth strategy in my department, we will consider how citizen participation by those young people over 18 can be promoted. We will, of course, be consulting directly with young people in developing this strategy. The output of your work, of the Being Young and Irish initiative, provides us with a very important resource for this purpose. While we may emerge from the recession with a new, more inclusive set of values, we cannot do so, as you have said, in any authentic way without providing all young people with the opportunity to fulfil their potential. Over 90% of young people now complete the Leaving Certificate. In doing so, they have proven their interest in education and employment. We must revitalise our economy and our training supports to address youth unemployment. Those under 25 have an unemployment rate of 30% compared to a rate of 14% for those aged between 25 and 54 years of age. Unemployment for young men at 37% is higher than for young women. Young people represent 18% of all those unemployed and over half of the young unemployed are long-term unemployed. The effort to address youth unemployment is obviously closely related to the improvements we are seeking to achieve in the economy and the labour market generally. 
However, we must further develop the effectiveness of training and labour market supports for young people so that they add further to the skills and resilience needed to gain and maintain employment in a much more uncertain world. I welcome the positive vision emerging from the consultations of an innovative and creative Ireland. Indeed, I particularly welcome the emphasis on our creative industries as a source of national pride and economic potential. The need for an overhaul of our second level education and system and changes in the uh, entry system to third level are highlighted in your report. Last month, the government announced plans for a radical reform of the junior cycle. The reforms recognise many of the points emerging from the consultations which you've held. The need to promote a model of education at second level, which is attuned to a more rapidly changing, technologically driven world. The transition from second level to third level is also being examined by my colleague Rory Quinn in conjunction with the Higher Education Authority and the university sector. The issue of positive mental health emerges as a priority for you in your work, as it does in all of the consultations we've been having around the country with young people. This is an issue for all of us at individual, community and national level. And the Sea Change National Stigma Reduction Campaign has worked with over 50 voluntary organisations in the country, state agencies, universities and youth groups. And among its key target groups have been young men where stigma is most keenly felt. Young men are least likely to seek help for themselves or to know how to help others. You also highlight our alcohol and drinking culture. They were highlighted again and again in the consultations. And we will shortly in government be considering the National Substance Misuse Strategy Steering Group to assist in comprehensively tackling problematic alcohol use. Our ambivalent attitude to excessive alcohol use has persisted and grown over many years. And of course, government has a strong role to play in showing leadership on this issue. But it will require a commitment from a much wider range of actors than it has been possible to achieve to date if, as a society, we are to achieve a healthier relationship with alcohol. Our approach to alcohol is a perfect example of how we will never solve our problems using the same thinking that created them. It is an example of an area where I believe your generation will be instrumental in determining whether a fresh approach is adopted or whether the social patterns and thinking of the past continues uninterrupted. The consultation report and the declaration are much more comprehensive than it is possible for me to do justice to in my few brief remarks. I will study your views and priorities carefully. I will be particularly interested in drawing upon them in the young people's strategy being developed by my department next year. I will also work with the president in bringing relevant recommendations to other colleagues and government. Today is about young people's voices and the need for this voice to inform how we all make this country a better place. I would like to once again thank the President for using his office to bring attention to these issues and for supporting you in having your voice heard on matters which are of central importance for the future of this country. Thank you very much indeed. Gramagada <laughs> August Bronwyn Vekas or Cree, a guy while a Gachania V Lynn Sawalia, August Erlina, Livsha or Fod, a V Ron for Tuck, Instant Togersha, a Zuck for Kid Ibra or Fod, August Darnoig, Lesh and Uktron Vane, V Hill D O Higgin, a Sukton Dash, Intuxha or Hort Duner Fod. 
Kudoga di Aslana Wali Shiv Galer. Now I'd like to ask the President, the Minister and young people already identified to remain here for a few photos. Otherwise, the President would like, to, like you to know that he will meet you all individually in a receiving line shortly and he would like to invite you all to join him for a thank you reception in the State Reception Room where Ryan Sheridan, who kindly provided his music for Being Young and Irish 2012, is on stage. Gurmila Mahogut. Thank you, Mr.